So, oh, yeah. I don't think I have to say anything else because Dr. Collins said it all in 2000 at the gathering of the master's lecture in which that he just finished stating he was a Moor. And if you notice, the colors of the red, black, and green behind him as he made that statement. Number two, the whole planet was called Asiatic, which he referred to it, of course, the European referred to it as Pangea, which means all land mass, or all land. All right, all, all land is one. All right, during that time, it was referred to as Asia, or Asia. Um, that is taking you, that is within the um, Kabbalah. Matter of fact, um, Malakut, which is called the kingdom, um, which means the realm of the making, it was called Asia. A-S-S-I-A-H. So you can find that within the Rosicrucian doctrine, the Theosophical Society doctrine, um, you know, the various um, so-called secret societies knew this information. Um, E.A. Waits' um, book, um, The Holy Kabbalah, he breaks it down in there. So, um, we can go on now to Deuce Muhammad Ali, um, Bey Ifandi, um, November the 21st, 1880, um, let me see, 1880, um, 1866, June 25th, 1945. He was born in Alexandria, Egypt, to a Sudanese mother and an Egyptian father. Um, he was a Pan-Africanist. Um, he did many things. Um, he was one of the first people to write um, the history of Egypt, and the fact that he wrote it was, you know, he wrote it being one of the Egyptians. He himself being Egyptian. That was one of the first books written by on the history of Egypt by an Egyptian, so the book was received on uh, critical acclaim. And then, of course, in 1912, we found the London in Orient, um, African um, Times and Orient Review, um, in which that this journal magazine got out to the United States, the Caribbean, West Africa, South Africa, Egypt, Asia, um, India, China, Japan. You um, know that Marcus Garvey, who was living in London at the time, worked with Ali, and contributed to the article, um, articles um, of that journal. Um, it ceased publication in October 1918. Um, it was succeeded by African and Orient Review, uh, which operated through most of the 1920s. And in that year, following the um, journal's demise, Ali traveled to the United States. There he worked with Marcus Garvey's um, Universal um, Liberal Improvement Association movement, contributing articles um, on African um, issues to the Negro world. Um, and headed a department on African affairs up under Marcus Garvey. And right here in the African origin of Freemasonry, the true history of Freemasonry in the African and its resurrection amongst the Africans in the diaspora by Zachariah Grimaldi in the degree, he says Marcus Garvey learned a lot of Dusma, uh, from Dus Muhammad Ali about the ideology of Pan Africanism. Now, this is the international flag, it's also called the Black Nationalist flag. Let me get Sorry about that, let's get back to it. Uh, here we go. Um, African nations flag, Pan-African flag, referred to as also the UNI, um, UNIA flag, Black Liberation flag, many names. But this is the international flag, all right? So this does not contradict anything about being Moorish. The flag in which that property of Drali bought was our national flag that once flew here in al Morocco. This is the international flag in which that flies now within over 22 countries in Africa, all right? Um, you see here that it was um, originally created as the official banner of the African race by the members of the um, UNIA um, and the um, ACL, all right? The UNIA um, does, um, designed the, um, the official colors of the African race by the UNIA at the convention held here in Madison Square Garden, New York. The organization formally adopted it in Article 39 of the Declaration of the Rights of the Negro People of the World on August the 13th, 1920. All right, the reason why it was created was because the flag, um, because in 1920, it was a response actually from the UNIA from this enormously popular song in 1900 called Every Race Has a Flag But the Coon. All right, now of course, you know, the coon is actually short for the Kundalini, you know what I'm saying? Um, or the Kunda, which means the bowl, talking about the serpentine fire, right three and a half times core, you have the base of the spine, in which that awakens us to not just nationality, to birthright, but also to our divine higher self. All right, in 1921, the African Times and Orient Review 
Marcus Garvey was quoted up there in points of the flag. He said, show me the race of the nation without a flag, and I will show you a race of people without any pride. Yea, in song and mimicry, um, they have said, every race have a flag but the coon. How true, yea, but they, um, but they that was, but that was said of us four years ago. They cannot say it now. All right, so that's how that came about. So the color is red, red blood that unites all Africans, um, people who are African descent, also shared for liberation. Um, black, black people whose existence as a nation through a um, not a non-state um, nation state is um, affirmed by the existence of the flag and green, the abundance of natural resources of Africa. Now, a journalist by the name of Charles Mowbray White states that Marcus Garvey proposed the colors for the following reasons. Garvey said red because of sympathy for the reds of the world, which is talking about the Indians, and the green for the sympathy of the Irish, who was called the green niggas, in the fight for um, freedom, and the black for the Negro. All right, today there are many African nations that have adopted the colors red, black, and green um, after the great um, Marcus Garvey and his program of African redemption. The flag of Malawi, which is um, formerly called Nassaland, um, is bordered on Zambia, Tanzania, as well as Mozambique, reflects the um, Pan-African um, flag border of the stripes, red, black, and green. Um, here we have the um, uh, Biafan flag, which actually was west of Nigeria with a sunburst of, um, in the center. This flag actually flew from 1967 to 1970. And as you see, the colors, red, black, and gray. All right, here we have the Kenyan flag. Um, the colors red, black, and green also is instituted here, separated by the white. Um, still flies today. So here we have all these various countries in Africa. So out of 53 countries, over 22 countries now fly this international flag, all right, um, of Marcus Garvey. And they have made it their national flags. So um, gold, of course, has now been added to a lot of them. Or either way, as we just been seeing, are now found for the 22 national uh, flags of many African nations. They originated, they originated in Ethiopia, Kush, from where they also have relevance from the Rastafarian movement. They were used on many African, um, um, ancient um, African flags, most notably in the bloom on the flag of Granada, the Moorish state in Spain. So, the same colors was flown by the Moors, all right? Now, Granada, the Moors ruled Granada back in 14, before 19, um, before 1492. So, the Moors was flying the same colors of the red, black, and green before 1492, because the last stronghold of the Moors was Granada, Spain. And it was cast out of Spain in 1492. That is the, said to be the same year that Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Actually, he was spying on the Moors when they left. So the Moors already flew the same colors. The colors appeared most predominantly on the 1798 flag of Ethiopia. So we're talking about Kushites who flew the colors of red, black, and gray, dating back 500, before 500 years ago. All right, so let's end the um, confusion. So here we have, here in Sudan, you have right here, the colors of what? Red, black, and green. You can see the colors here, on this side here. Here, here. This is Sadiq El Mahdi. This is the Sudan last elected prime minister. He's supposedly be related to who? Dr. Dr. Malakazi York Hill. So here, what is on the side, we just finished talking about Kush, Ethiopia, flying the colors of red, black, and green. What's here? Sudan sits on the side of Ethiopia. All of this at one time was called Kush. So here we have the El Mahdi, um, directly guided one of the redeemer, originally named Muhammad Ahmed Ibn Asaid Abdullah. Um, August 12, 1844, 
June 22, 1885, um, in Odaman, um, Sudan, creator of the vast Islamic state, extending from the Red Sea to Central Africa, and founder of the movement that remained influential in the Sudan a century later. Here we have the picture of Dr. York, um, or who was known um, up under the ancestral law of New and Islamic Hebrews as Asaid Ibn Isa al Hati al Hamati, um, who was inspired by Honorable um, Marcus Mosiah Garvey, Prophet Nobu Drali, Sheikh Daoud, um, Ahmed Fasil, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, and others. Um, Imam Misa formed a group called the Asar Pure Sufis in 1967, which became the ancestral law of New and Islamic um, Hebrews community. In 1973, he visited Mecca and then went to the Sudan where he paid homage to the El Mahati um, Muhammad Ahmed um, tomb in Urbaman, um, Sudan. Then he also met the members of the El Mahati family and stated that he was the great, or that he was the grandson of the El Mahati Muhammad Ahmed, the Sudanese who defeated the armies of the British Empire. Okay, and which that um, we find that Gordon who was a um, British general, um, eventually ended up defeating um, Muhammad Ahmed. But these are the colors in which that Dr. York bought back during the 70s and 80s. All right, so we see the transition from out of Sudan. Here it is, we find the same colors in America in which that this reads, La ilaha illallah, watahu la kalahu, in which that basically there is no God but Allah, and all of the prophets are sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so, colors once again, red, black, and green. Another picture of it. Um, the Nawapians nations or the Union nation, as you see once again, they always use the red, black, and green colors. Let's find out what the red, black, and green colors mean because they come from off the wings of my yacht. As you see here, she has the colors red, black, and green. So Maya has seven virtues of life, truth, righteousness, justice, which is law, freedom, balance, order, morality. Maya wings symbolizes freedom, or the ability to ascend, to soar the heavens. In other words, to soar or become one with one's highest self. So actually Maya was the nature of, um, or goddess regulating the stars, seasons, and actually the both mortals and the natural rules, the deities who set the order of the universe from chaos at the moment of creation. So red, um, according to the ancient Kemites or ancient um, Tamarians, or Tamarians, um, is Dasher, um, was the color um, red, and was the color that meant life, energy, fire, and victory. Black, Kemp, symbolized the underworld, death, but also resurrection. Osar was the king of the afterlife and was called the lord of the perfect black. Green, Wajit, um, was the color of vegetation. New life, beneficial, life-producing um, behavior. Osar was also portrayed with green skin, referred to as, as the great green one. Um, within the Quran, he is known as al Qadir. Within the Bible, he's known as Chesedek, same one. And it's reference to his power of vegetation and to his own resurrection. So in all three regards, red, black, and green actually means resurrection. Not just in physical life, but also in the afterlife. That's what this symbolizes. So the red, black, and green once again means resurrection. Uh, excuse me, you said that the Atla is Melchizedek in the Bible. So yes. How do we prove that? You said, how do we prove it? Yeah. Um, through commentaries of um, historical notes, um, through factual notes, so which that shows that um, Melchizedek is um, also referred to as Michael, or Mikael, the one who dared to be like God. And then when you read about Al-Qadir, Al-Qadir um, was also called Melchizedek in the Holy Quran. So if Al-Qadir is called Melchizedek in the Holy Quran, and then he's also called Melchizedek in the Old Testament, and then we see the angel of war fighting in the New Testament as Michael, then we find out that they're all what he's saying, because Al-Qadir within um, Hebrew means the green one. Okay. So it's just, it's just about connecting historical pieces here. That's all. But um, the science is, is that these colors means resurrection. That's what we have to focus on. Here we have um, the ancient Kemites. Once again, you see these colors, red, black, and green, right around the heart center here. Here it is again. You see it here on her crown, red, black, and green. 
All right? Obviously, they knew me, and so we don't even have to go into um, the Moorish connection here. All right? So, um, the colors was worn around the heart center because the heart symbolizes the place of desire or the house of desire, which means they desire resurrection. Resurrection within the physical life, resurrection within the afterlife. Okay? This is why you used to wear your um, red, black, and green um, emblems of Africa around your neck, and it rested right on your heart. All right? This is the key and the science behind why you did what you did um, back during the um, 80s and 90s, and even now today, for those who are into the red, black, and green, which symbolizes resurrection, which we all should be within. Here we have um, Heru. Um, the two crowns on his head symbolizes Upper Egypt, the white, Lower Egypt, the red, set in Heru. In other words, the mergers of the lower self and the higher self. The red is the lower self, the um, white is the higher self. Here it is on top of the crown of his head, in which that stems from off the crown as well as around his neck, as well as also down to his tassel that reaches down to the back, is what? Red, black, and gray. You see? Here we have Tahuti with the same colors, red, black, and green, and gold. You know what I'm saying? Same colors. He's rocking. Right, so once again, it's around the throat, down to the heart, which also symbolizes uh, Ma Kehu, which symbolizes Tahuti being the one who does what with the spoken word, manifests. He also symbolizes the word itself. So it's the same science of in the book of John, because the word John actually means um, Yah. And Yah actually is from the word Ta, which is Tahu. So we find that Jah, a Yah, you know what I'm saying, which is John within the um, New Testament, said in his um, first chapter, second chapter, that Jesus was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. This is talking about the power of the manifestation of Tahu. So this is the reason why um, the colors are up around his throat, because he symbolized the power of resurrection, the spoken word. All right? Here we have the throne. This is the throne of our sect. That's what this is called. And our source sits on the throne of our sect. And what are the colors on the throne of our sect? You see the scales here? That's my act. Bringing things to the balance. That's the square in which that Mason stand on. This is the square that the nation of gods and earth speaks about. This is the square that the nation of Islam speaks about. This is the square that you see Noble Ali standing in the picture with his feet at a 45 degree angle is speaking about. This is talking about, once again, the resurrection, uplifting of fallen humanity. Mm -hmm. So here we have the colors once again on the throne. What colors are they? Red, black, and green. What is this around the neck of Osar? Osiris, his Greek name, once again, right around the throat, coming down to the heart area, red, black, and green. Here upon his crown are the colors. These right here, these are the same within the Old Testament as the two tablets of Moses, which symbolizes the Ten Commandments. It symbolizes the left and the right hemisphere of the brain. This symbolizes the pineal gland that sits in the center of the brain. And this symbolizes the illumination of the forefather, which is the eye of Heru, in which that once the Kundalini, which is the throne of all set, raises up. The Kundalini raises up. It opens the heart. Resurrection takes place into the immortal bodies, the three higher chakras. The illumination takes place here within the pineal gland, and then it spreads out here into upliftment, resurrection, even into the afterlife. So hence, he moves from being he moves from being um, the god of the conscious realm to becoming the god of the subconscious realm, the underworld. So hence, he went from being the green one, Al Qadir, um, um, Melchizedek. Um, as they would say, Michael slash Maku Heru. Maku Heru is the um, a Heru Maku um, Sutek. Heru Maku Sutek is the word Melchizedek, which is nothing more than a form of um, Osa. Osa is Heru. Heru is Osa. Osa um, is who he was, um, as we would say, on the physical plane. And then as he become the Lord of the Perfect Black into the um, world of the um, subconscious plane, we know that um, at this point he had to be what? Resurrected. And we know that our set is the one who resurrected him. Tahuti, as we just really seen, was the god or the netter in which that had to form his phallus 
um, which was um, eaten supposedly by three different stories now. One states that it was eaten by a crocodile, one states it was eaten by a crab, one states that it was eaten by um, a catfish. Those are basically known as scavengers of the sea or of the ocean. So that's the reason why those symbols was being utilized, not to take the story literally. But the tekin or the phallus or the penis um, was what was one of the 14 missing, was, was one of the um, 14 pieces of Osiris or uh, saw. Being that it was missing, Osiris was only able to gather 13 um, of the pieces in which that um, Osiris was cut up by his brother Set and the 72 conspirators, which within the same story of Hiram Abiff, of the three ruffians, and Hiram Abiff being hidden in his head, um, you know, hidden in his head and then laid in the north. This is all symbolic stories. But once again, we see the colors of red, black, and green right here. And we see the vulture is standing here behind. The vulture symbolizes what? What happens when you see a vulture? Normally you see a dead carcass, right? So the vulture here, however, is protecting our sword um, as he becomes the lord of the underworld. All right, so here he goes to become the Lord of the Perfect Black. So in this sense, um, what it states within the, um, the 101 and the 102 um, of the Moorish Science Temple of the um, Questionnaire for Moorish Children, Moorish Americans, where it says that black is, um, that science teaches that black equal, um, is equal to death, this is actually what he's referring to. Not to be spooky, five, but once again, what is this around his neck? With the colors of red, black, and green once again. All right, so the resurrection is always um, is what the ancient Kemites um, taught on. Now, metaphysically, the colors, um, which when you deal with color healing, light therapy, chronos therapy, or interchangeable, what happens? You find that red symbolizes the first root or base chakra, which is survival, security, um, trust, elements of the earth, connect to the mother, passion, strong feelings, anger, or rage, sexual attraction, stimulation, um, arousal. Creative powers unleash the color of action, femininity. All right, somebody also to the Mars and Sun. All right, Mars is known as the red planet, and then of course when the sun is getting ready to set, it oftentimes turns red. Hence the term set and set being associated with the color red, or setting or satin or satin being symbolic to the color red. All right, green, the fourth, the heart chakra symbolizes relationships, association with the heart and lungs. One willingness to live, association with the sense of touch and element of air. Um, heart energy, money, success, prosperity, connection to nature, listening, caring for the environment, the color of life, comment, optimism, masculinity, symbolic to Venus. All right, Venus is the um, symbol of love. All right, um, black, melanin, protection, being able to absorb negative energy, power, mystery, hidden knowledge, supreme balance. So this is actually what these colors mean in its positive um, light, in its positive, in the metaphysical explanation of them all. Now, here we have, once again, the colors of red, black, and green. We have red, black, which is the border on the star, and then green. The five-pointed star of right here symbolizes Venus, the planet of love. We just went over that. Here it is, the flag of Morocco, Arabic, is made up of red filled with a black border, green, and two over a star. All right, according to the 102 101 questionnaire for Moorish children, Moorish Americans, they ask the question what kind of flag is the Moorish? It is a red flag with a five pointed star in the center, which is symbolic actually to the planet Venus for love and copper. All right, and you'll see how copper ties into us also a little bit later on here. Um, and here, 20, it says, what do the five pointed star represents? It represents love. Told you that off the bat. Truth, peace, freedom, and justice. 21, how old is the flag? It is over 50,000 um, years old. Um, that's what it says in the 102. In the 101, it says 10,000 years old. All right? In um, 63, question, it says, what is the shade of their skin? Olive. Now, we're going to get into that. But before we get into that, let's go to the 50. Um, thousand years and actually what that is talking about. We find some information here that links it together the Supreme Wisdom Lessons, the Lord's Found Muslim Lessons, um, number two, one through 40. This is the first um, term examination assignment of Mr. Elijah Muhammad. 
who answered the questions to Master Fra Muhammad, and it says, who made the Holy Quran or the Bible? How long? Well, you can tell us um, why does Islam renew our history every 25,000 years? Answer, the Holy Quran or Bible is made by the original people, who is Allah, the supreme being, or black man of Asia. The Quran will expire in a year, 25,000 years, 9,080 years from the day of this writing. It says the nation of Islam is all wise and does everything right in its hand. The planet Earth, which is the home of Islam, is approximately 25,000 miles in, in circumference. So the wise science of the East, black man, must uh, make history or Quran to equal his home circumference a year to equal a mile. And thus, every time his history lasts 25,000 years, he renews it for another 25,000 years. So, that's your 50,000 years, you see? Because every time his history lasts 25,000 years, he renew it for another 25,000 years. So hence, 25 plus 25 is what? 50. All right, so here we have the astrological symbol for Venus is the same as that used in biology for the female sex. A circle and a small cross underneath, which is what? The same symbol as the key of life, the source of life, which is called the Ankh, the eternal symbol, one and the same. So Venus symbol here is the same as the Ankh, as you see. All right? So here, according to Western Universal Dictionary 1937 edition, it says, define a American. It says, an aboriginal or one of the various copper colored natives found on the American continent by the descendants of European um, settlers. The following is the original application of the name Maru. Maru is where we get the term more from, as well as also the fact that it's a various copper colored natives, hence correlated to Venus once again, our Phoenician relationship symbolized within the word love, and hence the word Maru also means love, which is the ancient comedic terminology. All right, the word Maru comes from the word Mary, which is actually the form of our set, so our set also represented not just Sirius, but also Venus, love. Hence you have Af um, 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 the Greek um, goddess called what? Aphrodisia, right? And um, she was known as the goddess of love. Symbolized Venus once again. You mean Aphrodisia? Yeah, well, right, the Greek, um, um, yes. Now, earlier it says, um, what colors is their um, skin? Olive. Well, here we have various um, colors of olive. We have the green olives. Of course, we showed you all saw being the green guy. But here we have the red and the brownish um, colors of olives also, which is, um, we normally don't see them, but then we also have the black. So we have green, various shades of brown to black olives. All right, we know that we don't see too many green people nowadays walking the planet. Um, but we do know that um, there are children that are being born every day and you will um, see a green patch um, on their buttocks or up near their smaller back area in which that shows that one time we did carry the tint of green within us which was actually more copper within our bloodstream. So, so, <clears throat> so what happens when copper and water mix? What color terms? Great. Statue of Liberty. Well, what happens when iron and water mix? Turns red. Rust. So hence now the majority of this um, is this reddish color, or this copper um, color in that in, in that sense. Now of course we know that when um, you know you got a penny, a fresh copper penny is reddish too. All right. However, um, we have to go into the fact that how does this Alma Rock and flag that we just showed that had the colors of red, black, and green fits into the scenario? Why was it flown here at one time in the Americas? Well, according to the Black's Law Dictionary. Admirality, it stays specifically here. It was probably the successor of the Consular Court, what was the Admirality course that they use now, which was emphatically the courts of the merchants and the seagoing person. In other words, the Moors. The Moors were the navigators of the seven seas, establishing the principal maritime cities on the revival of economics, I mean, excuse me, of commerce after the fall of the Western Empire. When did the Western Empire fall? I could have sworn that we was living in. So they wasn't talking about this Western Empire here that fell. It was talking about our Western Empire in which that they um, um, upserted and um, how we ended up getting into slavery. So they are telling you right here that we had a Western Empire, that there was a Western Empire, and we are all these descendants of the Omex 
who are the descendants of the Dogons, who are the descendants of the ancient Egyptians or the Tamarian people, or the Tanaset, um, who was also known as the Tarsetian people. All right? So here, the Kasula courts, because that's what they're talking about right here. There was a, it was the proper successor of the Kasula courts. So what was our courts? Called the Kasula courts. Their courts is called Amorality courts. And they tell you the science here. Kasula courts. Courts held by the Kasul of one country within the territory of another. Under authority given by treaty, hence the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of Morocco and the United States. For the, ups, for the settlement of civil cases. In some instances, they had also a criminal jurisdiction, but in this respect was subject to review by the courts of the home government. The last United States consular courts was what? Morocco. Morocco was established in, it was abolished in 1956. Just in 1956. We just lost our courts in 1956. Because it just happened 60 years ago. So, what this means is we accepted civil rights in 1955 following Martin Luther the King. And because of that, they was able to shut down our court system. So now, that's why we have to go to their courts in order to defend ourselves, you know what I'm saying, on laws in which that neither our uh, things are not supposed to be up under because we're not citizens. <laughs> that's why we had our own court. So they done faked this out and supposedly made us citizens, but the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. So that means that we're not citizens of the United States. None of us are, actually, unless you live in Washington, D.C., and you was born there. Then you would be considered an employee or a citizen of Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. But if you was not born there, then the closest thing you can get to is being a state citizen. But since you're not a citizen, period, then you can't be a state citizen either. So they give you privileges to make it appear as if you're a state citizen. Hence, your marriage license, your um, driver's license, your social security card, birth certificate. All, right, all of that comes from out of the state in which that you live. So they propose that um, that those things, um, those privileges that they have given you are, are the things in which that makes you a citizen. It does not. Um, like Malcolm said, you can put kittens in the oven, but that don't mean that they're biscuits. So here in the Journal of the House of Representatives, um, 1789, 1790, it shows here a petition of a small party of free moors in, 19, in 1790 um, and they was um, and they wanted to avoid the um, status of Negro, and in that case they should um, commit any fault that they should be tried as citizen of the United States and not under the Negro Act. All right. So in other words, being that we had our own courts during that time, we have been tried within our own courts, um, which is the um, Moroccan courts here in the United in what is now called the United States of America. All right. So we've been tried under that instead of the Negro Act in which that, um, you see what happened with the Dred Scott case decision. Um, Judge Cheney specifically stated mm -hmm. that um, you're not a citizen and you would never be. And there's nothing that a Negro has that we are bound to respect. So here we have um, Dr. Francis Quest Wellesen. Um, she states that the system attacks the people of color, particularly of African descent, in nine major areas um, of people's activities. Economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Now, the Moors currently, right now, are learning the science of law. All right? Now, we have many groups, many groups that um, teaches um, various segments of this white supremacist um, um, tentacles, I should say, throughout society. All right? These nine major areas of the confrontation on fronts that we must master. Dr. Fresca, um, Dr. Wilson, she believed that it is imperative that people of color, especially people of African descent, understand how the system of white supremacy works in order to demantle it and bring true justice to planet Earth. So if you're not studying these areas, these, these nine battlefronts, you would never um, gain um, um, freedom. You become a complete sovereign, have self-determination, because they control the economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. So you must master those various areas in order to, um, to basically dismantle it and to bring true justice to the planet Earth, as she stated. Here, in the book, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos of Community, even Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King said, we are approaching an area where the voice of the Constitution is not clear. We have left the realm of the constitutional rights, and we are now entering the area of human rights. Malcolm X on civil rights versus human rights. 
Malcolm say, human rights come before civil rights. You can never get civil rights until you have human rights. Human rights represents the rights to be a human being. Whenever you are respected and recognized as a human being, your civil rights are automatic. No, you have to get recognition of human rights first. The Constitution classified our people as three feet of, of a man, which meant subhuman. Not a complete human being. And once our human characteristics were completely destroyed, this gave them justification for treating us like we were animals. Then it was also justified um, their, their selling us. If the black man's human rights been respected, he never could have been a slave here in America. And if his human rights have been restored by the past, um, Emancipation Proclamation automatically, we would have been citizens after the Civil War. So we must be regarded as human beings or humans. Our human rights must be respected before we can ever be regarded as citizens um, and our civil rights be respected. All right? So here we have the United Nations Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. I'm not going to go too much into it, but I will read a couple or a few um, articles um, so we can get the gist of it. Um, here, Indigenous people um, have the right um, without any kind of discrimination and exercising of their rights, in particular to their indigenous origin and identity. Um, indigenous people have the right um, to exercise self-determination, have the right to autonomy and self-government in matters relating to internal and local affairs, as well as the means for financing their autonomous um, functions. Um, we have the right, um, in, um, indigenous individuals have the right to a nationality, in, um, indigenous individuals have the right to life, physical and mental integrity. All right. Here we have the right to cultural values and our ethnic identities. Um, any, um, we have the right to be uh, protected from any form of propaganda designed to promote and incite racial and um, ethnic um, discrimination directed against them. Indigenous people have the right to belong to an indigenous community or nation in accordance with the traditions and customs of that community or nation concern. No discrimination of any kind may arise from such a right. Now, that means any group in which that you join, if you choose to, or either you can do it individually, and which we will show you, um, which correlates to the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People, you have the right in order to, um, for those rights in which that you are certain to be, um, to be um, upheld. Here, 11, it says these people have the right to practice and vitality, um, um, revitalize their cultural traditions and customs, it includes the right to maintain, protect, and develop the past, present, and future manifestation of their culture, archaeology, historical sites, artifacts, design, communities, I mean ceremonies, technologies, and visual and performing arts and literature. Um, these people have the right to manifest, practice, develop, and teach their spiritual, religious traditions, customs, and ceremonies. Have the right to revitalize, use, develop, and transmit the future generation, their histories, languages, oral traditions, philosophies, writing systems, and, liter and um, literatures, and to designate and retain their own names for communities, places, and persons. All right? Indigenous people have the right to determine their own identity and membership in accordance with their customs and traditions. This does not impair the right of indigenous individuals to obtain citizenship of the state in which that they live. Um, indigenous people have the right to participate in decision-making matters which would affect their rights through representation chosen by themselves in accordance with their own um, procedures, as well as to maintain and develop their own indigenous decision-making institution. So hence, um, even here, according to the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People, we have the right to put together our own law firms, indigenous law firms, all right? And also our own court systems. So indigenous people have the right to promote, develop, and maintain their own institutional structures, distinctive customs, spiritual, traditional procedures, practices, um, in that case where they exist, judicially, um, um, systems, customs, in accordance with the international human rights um, standards. Um, and just people have the right to determine the responsibilities of the individuals of their community, and all rights and freedoms recognized herein are equally guaranteed to male and female indigenous individuals. All right, here, if you don't know that you're indigenous, well, according to the Inter-American Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People, you, um, it was um, accepted September um, 18, 1995. Here's the section on indigenous people. The definition says, in this declaration, indigenous people are those who embody historical continuity, 
with societies which existed prior to the conquest and settlement of their territories by Europeans. So even if you said that you was descended from the Olmecs here, who are Africans, um, coming from out of the West African interior, from the Dogons, from out of Mali, who came out from um, the ancient Kemetic or Tamarian um, Egypt um, area about 8,000 years ago, 6,000 BC, then you, you are still the same people regardless if you want to say that you just came here 400 years ago, as we would see here. Alternatively, one, as well as people born involuntarily to the new world who freed themselves and reestablished the culture from which they have been torn. So that means that even if you say that you were just Africa 400 years ago and you don't even recognize your indigenous ship and your connections here, um, dating back over 6,000 years ago and further here in the Americas, then you too are still classified as being indigenous because the oldest people on the face of the planet are so-called blacks and hence we are the most indigenous people on the face of the planet. So here we have alternative two as well as tribal people who social, um, cultural and economical conditions distinguish them from other sectors of the national communities and whose status is wholly and partially by their own customs and traditions or by um, special laws and regulations. So it speaks again of status. Their status is wholly or partially by their own customs or traditions. So you must develop your own culture, your own customs, your own traditions, and your own laws and regulations, all right? And here it says what? Self-identity or self-identification as indigenous or tribal shall be recognized as the fundamental criteria for determining the groups to which the provision of this declaration applies. So you have to self-identify, all right? So here, federal law, state law, it says rules of evidence, articles nine, authentication and identification. What does it say that you have the ability to do? Self-identification, self-identification. What do you need? Certified copies of public record. Foreign public documents. In other words, documents that come from your own nation, from your own community. They accept it, and it is what? Federal and state rules of evidence. So the state in which that you live in has the exact same rules coming from out of Washington, D.C., which is the federal law. Hold on. And then you have the official um, po um, um, publication, so it can be books, pub um, pamphlets, or other um, publications purported to be issue of public um, authority, newspapers, um, per articles, uh, knowledge documents, commercial papers and related documents, presumed under state statutes, um, certified documents, records on regularly um, conducted activities, the original or duplicate of a domestic record of regular um, conducted activity. So all of this can be brought into a court of law in order to prove who you state that you are. Because this is about self-identification. This isn't about somebody determined, um, determining um, your existence. They can't use the name Negro, um, Black, or Colored on you any longer and say that you're a three-fifth of a human being. You have the right to self-determination. You have the right um, to, um, to self to self-analyze um, and to develop self-worth, self-love. Right. Uh, some people consider this begging. How would this be begging? Yes, you know, some people may say, oh, ain't, you know. Ain't none of them told you to come and do this. Okay. They just simply stated that you had the ability to do so. Okay. So, I mean, it'd be different if, um, once again, if you didn't know the law, yeah. then of course, you couldn't put anything on public record. Okay. So it wouldn't have effect on you one way or another. You'd still be classified as three fifth of a human being or uh, a non citizen. You know what I'm saying? We call it down to the um we call it down to the um US um, passport agency in Louisiana. And they the lady told us, yes, we know that you're not citizens of the United States. Mm. So she said that. So they know we're not citizens. Once you know it and they know it, then there's no problem. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And they know that a privilege can never supersede a right. Only thing you're doing here is asserting your rights. Okay. You're not begging anyone, because they're not begging you. This is um, information that they put out. Um, you know, you can find this information on the web, you know what I'm saying? But it's not like they put it in your face and say, yeah, niggas, come on down and I'll change your status. We need for you to do that. There ain't none of that going on. Ain't nobody doing that. So this isn't begging, this is simply you putting your information on record and you saying who you are. So you're taking yourself from out of um, the area of them self-determining who you are, which they classify you three people of human being. 
and you are stating who you are for the record, public record. So anyone can tap into the information and find out, oh, word, oh, I'm going to put his information um, you know, on record. Yo, I just pulled it up. Yo, yo, check that out. And you know, if you want to get your uh, can this circle thing, this rose? This, this the whole thing is circumventing the colorful laws. Because you don't want to be up under the colorful law. Because the colorful law are laws in which they have no standing with the Constitution and with natural law. All right? So that's that's the whole key. We want to um, take ourselves from out of being up under the colorful law. And you'll see why in a second, because that's the reason why they called you colors. Is because to tie you back into colorful law. But here we have the Declaration of the Rights of Negro Persons or Peoples of the World. This is written by the UNIA. I'm up in the Marcus Garvey. And if you notice, these are the exact same principles that we just finished going over in the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. He already had it back in the 1920s. And the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People was just passed in 2007, September 13, 2007. So here Marcus Garvey already had this information almost 80 years prior to the passing of the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People. So here it is. He says, being known to all men and women are created equal, entitled to the rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness because of this, we have duly rep um, elect represent um, representatives of Negro peoples of the world, invoking the aid of the just and almighty God, do declare all men, women, and children of our blood throughout the world free desertion, and do claim them as free citizens of Africa, the motherland of all Negroes. We declare that Negroes, when, um, um, wheresoever they form a community amongst themselves, shall be given the right to elect their own representations to represent them in legislative courts of law and such uh, institutions as may exercise control over the particular community. So you see how we just finished reading the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People and how this correlates to everything that we just finished saying. Walker Garvey did this 80 years prior to. We believe that any law or practice tends to derive, um, deprive any African of his land and the privilege of free citizens of ship um, within this country is unjust and immortal and natives shall respect any law, and no native shall respect any law or practice. Um, we declare taxation without representation is unjust and tyrannous, and thus shall be, um, be no obligation, um, obligation to the part of Negroes to obey the levy of the um, tax by any law making body uh, from which he is excluded and denied representation on account of his race of color. We believe this self determination of all people. We declare the rights of um, religious freedom. We declare the rights of unlimited and unprejudiced education for ourselves and our pros and, um, posterity forever. All right, we declare that unjust for any country, state, nation to enact laws tending to hinder or obstruct the free immigration of Negroes on account of their race of color. That the right of the Negro to travel unmolested throughout the world be not abridged by any person or persons and all Negroes are called upon to give aid to the fo uh, fellow Negro when thus molested. We declare that all Negroes are entitled to the same right um, to travel over the world as other men. We hereby de um, demand that the governments of the world recognize our leaders and his representative chosen by the race to look after the welfare of our people under such government. All right, um, we declare, um, demand, excuse me, to complete control of our social institutions by interference by um, any alien race or races. That the colors red, black, and green be the colors of the Negro race. All right, um, we believe that any limited um, um, liberty, limited liberty, uh, which deprive one of the um, complete race, I mean, excuse me, complete rights and prerogatives of free citizenship is but a modified form of slavery. We demand a free and unfiltered commercial intercourse with all the Negroes, people of the world. We declare the absolute freedom of the seas for our people. We demand um, our duly accredited representative to be given proper recognition in all leagues, conferences, conventions, and courts of international arbitration where the human rights are discussed. All right? So um, this is how we feel. We want all people to know that we shall maintain and contend for the freedom and the equality of every man, woman, and child for our race, um, with our lives and our fortune and our sacred honor. All right? So here we go back to we the people, the Lenny Lanapi, um, or the Iroquois who helped give this information to um, supposedly Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, um, in which that it states in Article 1, Section 2, Clause 3 of the Constitution, it states representatives and direct tax shall be appropriated amongst the several states which may be included 
within the union according to their respective numbers and shall be determined by adding to the whole numbers of the free person, including those bound to service for a um, term of years, and in excluding Indians not taxed and three fifth of all other persons, slaves. That's what that was a similar to. We conscious we you actually um, that was symbolic to the three fifth of all other persons, which is three fifth of a human being, which Malcolm just finished saying earlier, <laughs> subhuman beings. So they refer to us as subhumans. And slaves is property, and property cannot own property. Alright? Slave, a person who is wholly subject to the will of another, one who has no freedom of action, but whose person and service are wholly under the control of another. One who is under the power of a master who belongs to him. So the master may sell and dispose of his person to his industry and his labor without being able to do anything. All right? Have anything or acquire anything. But what must belong to his master? So this is Black's Law Dictionary, the fourth chapter, um, the fourth edition. So this shows right here that we're still slaves. You know what I'm saying? Because... We haven't gone forth with their attitude of self-determination, being self-sustained. And how we know because right here it says chow, which is a nice little French word which means cow. It says an article of person of um, person's property, any species of property not, not amounting to a freehold or fee in land. The term chow is more comprehensive one than goods, as it includes anim um, animate, includes animates as well as inanimated property. What is animated property? In other words, anything that moves, including you. This is Black's Law Dictionary 1. So, you being chattel property, you have chattel papers. Those chattel papers, as this definition here, y'all can read that, but um, I won't go into it, but it says records that evidence of right to payment um, arising from out of the use of a credit or charge card or information obtained on or for use with the card. Now, it says also here in this paragraph, monetary obligation means of monetary obligation secured by the goods or owned under a lease of the goods and including the monetary obligation with respect to software used in the goods. Now, all of this is a nice way of saying is that um, child papers would be actually included as your birth certificate, which is the major bond in which they operate off of. In which they um, actually sell on the stock market um, and the countries actually purchase your birth certificates. Here we know, because right here at the bottom left hand side of your birth certificate, it has American Bank No Company. So your birth certificates, marriage certificates, death certificates, as well as mortgage notes are now called warehouse receipts. Warehouse receipts means documents of titles, maybe, maybe a negotiable instrument and is often used for financing with inventory as security. Printed on banknote paper, which may mark you and yours as chattel property of the banks that our government borrows from every day. A certificate is a paper established in ownership claim. This is from Barnes, um, Black, um, Barnes um, Dictionary of Law and also from Barnes Dictionary of Banking Terms. So registration of birth began in 1915 by the Bureau of Census with all states adopting the practice by 1933, hence the Joint House Resolution 182. When they took the goal from what the standard um, from backing, um, the fiat notes, so the Federal Reserve notes. So here it is, um, how they purchase your bonds, which is your birth certificates, American Bank Note Company. So this leaves you in these states in which that they determine or classify you as here, Negro. Last little dictionary states, the word Negro means a black man, one descended from African race, does not commonly include a mulatto. But the laws of, the, um, of, of different states are not uniform in this respect. Some include in the description Negro who has one eighth or more blood, African blood. The term Negro means necessarily person of color, and not every person of color is Negro. Then black person. Excuse me, does that still apply? Yes, Well, 
I mean, of course, we came along with one drop of black blood means that you're black. Mm -hmm. So, um, once again, it says that the states are not uniform, they didn't win. Some states do state that. It's still on the records today. Yes. So here, black person, black person occurring in the constitutional laws must be taken in its generic sense as contradiction um, from what? From white. So what is generic sense? It must be taken in its generic sense, black person. What generic mean? Genetic. Uh, it deals with the genes, however, in this particular case, generic just means um, various, um, vast. In other words, it's not specific in this um, terminology. In other words, black person is not specific um, as it occurs within constitutional law. So that means that you must find a word in which that is more specific, because black person here is not specific, it's generic. So here we have the word color. For whatever reason, this part got cut off, but we'll still go through it. Um, color in appearance, a semblance, a saccharine, as distinguished from that which uh, appears to be real but isn't. A prima facie or apparent right, having a deceptive appearance, a plausible, assuming, concealing a lack of reality, a disguise, a pretext, this is what all this reads right here, this part that got cut off. But right here, goes down to, the word also appears to be, means the dark color shown in the presence of Negro blood. It is equivalent to African race, from African descent. All right? So right here, it says, so it says, it appears to be real, but isn't. Having a deceptive appearance. And then it says, uh, the word also means the dark color shown in the presence of Negro blood and it's equivalent to African descent. <laughs> so you wonder why you get racially profiled, police brutality, and so forth and so on, is because of the way in which that law has us under the spell. Because that's what law is. You have to write yourself into law based on real natural law. This is not natural law. This is man trying to make you into something in which that you're not. But that's how he's been able to control society. So you must break this spell, this law. This is the reason why to study law, is to break the spell. So here we have the word colored. A common usage in America, um, this term is in such phrases, color person, the color race, the color man, and the like, is used to designate Negroes and the people, the persons of African race, including all persons of mixed blood descended from Negro ancestry. Here, it has also been held that there is no legal technical significance to the phrase colored person which the courts are bound judicially to know. So, the, NAW, the um, NAACP, the National Advanced Association of the Colored People, they don't know that in the court. The court is not bound to know that. You see that? Which the court are bound judicially to know because it has no legal significance, technical significance, that phrase. This is in the law. This is in the Black's Law Dictionary. So when you in court, they right. apply. This is, how they, this is how they see it. That's the spell. Okay. Right. So now people are getting mad because more of study the law. Why? This is where they got the spell at. You have to break this spell. Because you you in the court. Right. So you got to know how to play in the court. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we have all the guys from Muhammad and Prophet Muhammad Ali together. So people ask, well, how can a Moor teach on the red, black, and green? Well, obviously they didn't have a problem with it. Here they all together, back in the 1920s. We just seen that Dr. Khalid didn't have a problem with it. He said he was a Moor, and way more, and, um, and right behind him was the color red, black, and green. Just when you bring it down that the Alpha Rock flag actually is red, black, and green. But because People don't do the research, they talk out the side of their neck. So here we have confusion. But if they don't, um, but here we have a postcard in which it actually came from um, Prophet Nobu Dra Ali, um, 1023, 27, 1927, Atlanta, Georgia. He said, I have been to see Mr. Garvey at the federal prison and I will be home Friday or Saturday. Love to all from your husband, Nobu Dra Ali. This is the actual postcard here. 
The front company postcard to his wife at the time was Sister um, Pearl Drew Ali, while at the federal prison in Atlanta, Georgia, visiting Marcus Garvey in 1927. The picture is the uh, rendition of the federal prison where Marcus Garvey was, was housed. So we know that they knew each other. So there was never a discrepancy between the red, black, and green um, of Moroccan flag or the red, black, and green flag, international flag of Marcus Garvey. One was national, one was international. Marcus Garvey said here about nationhood from his philosophy in the pages of Marcus Garvey is the only means by which moderate um, civilization can completely protect itself. What is that? Nationhood is the only means which moderate civilization can completely protect itself. It's through nationhood. Independence of nationality, what? Independence of nationality. Independence of government is the means of protecting not only the individual, but the group. So your nationality protects who? Not only the individual, but the group. Hence, establishing your nationhood, which is the highest ideal of all people. The nation who does not count race are nations that have nothing. You see that? The world does not count races and nations that have nothing. Point me to a weak nation and I will show you a people oppressed, abused, taken advantage of by others. Show me a weak race and I will show you a people reduced to serfdom, peonage, and slavery. Show me a well-organized nation that will show you a people in a nation respected by the world. The greatest weapon used against the Negro is this organization. So, what is the highest ordeal? Nationhood. How do you get it? Independence of what? Nationality. Independence of government. So once you establish your nationality, you must form government. This is what gives us, not as individuals, but also as a group, our nationhood and our respect in the world because we have moved away from this organization. Here, in the Holy Quran of the Moral Science Temple of America, divinely prepared by Prophet Nubu Ali, um, it speaks the end of times in the film of the prophecies. It says in section in, um, three, in this modern day, there came a forerunner of Jesus who was divinely prepared by the great God Allah and his name is Marcus God. So even in the Holy Quran, chapter seven, Marcus Garvey's name is mentioned. Who did teach and warn the nations of the earth to prepare to meet the coming prophet, who was the brain, the true and divine creed of Islam. And his name was Nobu Ali, who was prepared and sent by, um, sent to this earth by Allah to teach the old time religion and the everlasting gospel to the sons of man. That every nation shall and must worship under their own vine and fig tree and return to their own and be one with their father God Allah. So there's a misconception going around, and some saying that the Moors are anti-African. Well, let's squash that. Once again, in the Holy Quran, um, circle seven, um, it says right here, Egypt, the capital of dominion, um, excuse me, Egypt, the capital, empire of the dominion of Africa. The inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites of the land of Canaan. Old man Cush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa who came from the land of Canaan. His father Ham and his family were second. Then came Ethiopia, uh, which meant the decimation line of the domain of Mexico, the first true and divine name of Africa. The dividing of the land between the father and the son. The domain of Cush in northeast and southeast Africa and southwest and southwest Africa was his father's domain of Africa. In the later years, many of his brethren from Asia and the whole land connect, um, joined together. The Moabites of the land of Moab who received permission from the Pharaoh of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa, which is here in North Mexico. They were the founders and the true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire. So this is the Moroccan Empire here. The little kingdom in which that you're talking about in Africa, which is called Morocco, is simply the kingdom of Morocco. But this is the empire, all right? This is where this flag was flown first, um, which is the red, um, black, and green um, flag of what is known as the Moroccan flag, all right, the green star. Uh, with their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brothers who sojourned from the land of Canaan seeking new home. Their domain and habitation extended from northeast and southwest Africa, across the Great Atlantis, even up to the present north, south, and central America, and also Mexico and the Atlantean and the um, Atlantis Islands, before the great earthquakes which caused the Great Atlantic Ocean. So how many times did we see the word Africa here? If more has got a problem with Africa, why is the word Africa here? Here, 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 here. Moors don't have a problem with the name Africa. 
So here we have that the word of Mexum, which is a muraca, all right, or muraca, or al Morak, is one of the many historical names of the landmass that includes North, Central, and South America, as well as the sojourning out surrounding islands. Other historical names was al Morak, Morocco, West Africa, Southwest Africa. Why do we say that North, South, Central, and the adjoining islands um, was actually South? West of Northwest Africa. Let's see. What we have here, Africa. During the time when this was all what is called Pangea or Ghana land, we find Northwest Africa here, which is actually now called North America, but it was connected to Northwest Africa. So their domain and habitation extended from Northeast and Southwest Africa across the Great Atlantis, even into the present North, South, and Central America, and also Mexico and the um, Atlantean Islands before the Great Earthquake, which caused the Great Atlantic Ocean. So as you see, this is before the Great Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean came about because of the separation of these um, land masses, North, Central, South America, from Africa. This is, Brother Kyle was about this is what Dr. Kyle was talking about. Was, this is what's called Asia. This is what we have here. This was called Asia, or God of the land at one time. This is Asia. When all the bodies of the land was together. This is why he said, Africa is our throne, but the earth is our home. So this destroys all that nonsense that's been going on. Come back to me with historical information. So here, the Holy Quran, so said once again, know thyself and our own Father God. It says, industrious acts of the Muslims of the Northwest and Southwest Africa. Um, these are the Moabites, Hamathites, Canaanites, and who was driven out of the land of Canaan by Joshua and received permission from the Pharaoh of Egypt to settle in that portion of Egypt. So actually, this was also um, the Egypt portion. And it says, in later years, they formed themselves kingdoms. These kingdoms were called this day, Morocco, Algiers, Tunis, Tripoli, etc. Where's Tripoli? You go back to the, um, by the, um, the um, anthem of the song, the anthem song of the Marines, it says from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. That was our extended, that was our um, empire. That was the Moroccan empire. So here we have um, the 102 and the 101 question is, asking more children Americans, says, um, why are we Moorish Americans? Because we are the descendants of the Moroccans born in America. Why, um, why are the Moroccan, um, where is the Moroccan empire? North, West, Amexum, 33. What is the modern name for Amexum, Africa? So here we have Hannibal, who came from out of the interior of Africa, from, um, from he was a um, Carthaginian. And we see here, the colors were black and green on the painting. Virginia military commander technician, often regarded as the greatest military technician and strategist in European history. So the Europeans consider him as the greatest. This is where they learned their art of war from um, moderately. Of course, you know, many people read the art of Sun Tzu, um, the art of war by Sun Tzu, but we also need to go back and study um, Hannibal and um, the way that he yeah. was on the chessboard. He, you so, know what? Uh, Sorry to interrupt you. There's a, there's a um, book out now by Aha Lung, where he deals with like a whole two chapters of Hannibal and his strategies. Yes. Even in Roots, they was quote uh, the same principle when they talk about when Kuta the Kid they was being was being taught by the elders. Like they were talking about if you get caught it, uh, you know, give your it'll be a uh, way out. You ain't gonna you know, uh, check that out. Movie again. No doubt. So we know um, what he's famous for. He marched um, the war elephants up over from Liberia and over the Alps into northern Italy. All right. Um, here we have um, that um, he occupied Italy for 15 years, but a Roman counter invasion of North Africa forced him to return to Carthage, um, where he was defeated by Scipio Africanus at the Battle of Sena. This is where the confusion comes in at. What is Scipio's name, Africanus? No, he was not. It has been assumed by so many African 
um, centric or Afrocentric scholars, and because of this, many students of theirs still perpetrate this fallacy. Sibio's Africanus was not his name. This was his name. Was Publius or Pupilus Cornelius Scipios. Africanus, as you can see, he was also called Scipios Africanus or Scipios the Elder. He was the general of the Second Punic War and the statements of the Roman Republic. He was best known for de um, defeating Hannibal at the final battle at the Second Punic War at the Zamba. Um, defeat that earned him the what? Abnomen, which is, means Noma. Noma is Latin for name. It earned him the name Africanus. The nickname, what, what? The nickname, the Roman Hannibal. So this is where the problem comes in at. Is the reason why there's been a discrepancy between that we supposedly have named Africa after this European. No, this African um, 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 name already existed. The European took on the name after he defeated Hannibal and they gave him the name Africanus in the nickname of the Roman Hannibal. That's why they did that. So Hannibal was actually called the African. So after word Africa was used before Africa. Yes. Yes, and I'm getting ready to prove that right yeah, now. And, and you know what? In the context where you just read it, it almost makes you uh, see it as Africanus being the, 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 the dark skinned one or the Tharthy one or the one from the dark skinned country. You know, when you read um, historical books, they'll mention a name like that. And right. then it'll, it'll kind of. But it's also in, a, in kind of a glorified position. Yeah. Right. You know, he, since he was defeat, he remember, defeated, he defeated. He was the greatest, Hannibal was the greatest. Technician, military technicians and strategists according to European history. Mm -hmm. So here goes the man who defeated Hannibal, who was the greatest, and because of that, they gave him the name Africanus. But his name was Scipius. And you see his name, he was Pupilus Cornelius Scipios. And they gave him the name Africanus based on the nickname of the mockery, actually, of him defeating Hannibal. So he became the Roman Hannibal in that regard. So this is a nonsense. Even here, when we use the word al kibalon that is an Arabic word. That is not African word, per se. It has been widely promoted in Afrocentric and African-centric circles as the true indigenous name for the continent of Africa. However, the term is in reality an Arabic influence term. Al means God, Kibu means strength, Lan means source. So God is my source of strength. al kibalon that's all that means. But that's Arabic. Now, I can't say Arabic is about 68% of the Metuneta. All right? So there is connection between Arabic, Hebrew, all the Semitic languages, Semitic languages. However, according to Kwasi, Ra, Naim, Fatah, Atan, Ahahan, Akan, in the article Origin of the um, Term African, he states the name African is not Europe, European, Arab, or origin. Afu Raka means the house of the great spirit of Ra. All right? So you can go right into his website, www.odwirafo.com, right slash N A N A S O M dot H T M L. And this is taken from off the pyramid text of Pepe um, Tetat and um, Mary M. Ra. Right. Well, this is the magazine. Hold it for a second. I just want to get the, that um, the yeah. reference. I use that in my book. Yes. First chapter, I say the same thing. Yes. But um, I just want to get that pyramid text. Oh, yeah. Of, uh, pyramid text of Pepe. 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 Uh, Tate. Tate. Mm -hmm. and, and Mary and Rock. Yeah. Well, I take people into those. Two. Right. And that's what I'm talking it's about. A we, we, right. We, we have to unify this information. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to make this holistic instead of linear. I mean, we, we done been through the linear thing. Because I've broken it down just like they did there, but I didn't have a ref. I just speak to between that, but I didn't have a reference text. Right. So now I can add this reference text. Okay. And if, I'm going to give you another one. Here's another one. Um, if you get the brother um, out of our full rock, he tells you right here, it means body of the life force. So Afu Ra means the body of the life force. Is that a new uh, CD or something? Yeah, well, oh, oh, that came out in the mid '90s. Oh, serious? Yeah, yeah mid to late '90s. Um, he um rapped with um Jaguar Damager. And uh, um, 
But right here, in the Temerian or Kemet or Egyptian, the title Ra, uh, when he moved through matter, is Afu Ra. The creator, as Afu Ra, takes on the form of a ram, which is Aries, the head of the zodiac. Afu means flesh, body, house, temple, and Ra means life force. And this comes from the Egyptian Book of the Dead by E.A. Wallace Budge. I define it almost exactly like that in my book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, give, it, make sure we get your book on, on camera. Okay. Give the name of your book right quick so everybody can know that they can get this information. Yes, please show it. Okay. Mm, definitely. Uh, excuse me. The book is um, Spiritual Warriors Are Healers. And right in my introduction, and in chapter one, when I talk about Africa, the uh, origins, all this information is given exactly like that. And like you said, this um, one of my main sources was the Book of the Dead, Dead, where they talk about Afu, meaning the flesh, you know, coming forth. But all this information is in spiritual words. As well as is also within my book, the First World Order, in which that we um, now have out. Um, we will, um, I don't like the book here, but, <laughs> but just We because, showed it on the last time you were here. Yes, so just, just go back to the last tape, the all known. <laughs> now, how does this correlate? Now, you know, I got to do a pass the rate number right quick. It ain't going to take long. I know a lot of um, RBGs ain't into the Bible, and that's fine. But I ain't into oh, The Bible's it. heavy, bro. But the Bible is into you. Because the word Bible simply means the papers. Mm -hmm. It's not the book of life, which is your DNA. So it don't matter. If, it's, if you ain't into it, it's in you. So here it is. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Know ye that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? 1 Corinthians 6.19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you? What ye have of God, and you are not your own, for you was bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which God, which are God's. Second Corinthians 6.16. 6, and what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So this ain't no spooky stuff. This is simply telling you about your higher self being embedded which is your divine soul being embedded inside of your pineal gland, and which that bestows the energy of Ra um, through you absorbing the rays of Ra, the seven spectrums of light, which is symbolic to the, um, the rainbow, the covenant between God and Noah, um, which is within your physical body called the seven chakras or the seven churches. And hence, you live through the rays of Ra. Your physical body itself is a hologram. I can take one speck of blood, one um, speck of spittle, one strand of hair and clone a whole nother you into existence. So that means that your body template works off of light. Otherwise, it won't be able to um, be able to um, demonstrate that type of manipulation. Okay? Now, you can get that information from the Temple of Man um, by um, R.A. Swalwellick, um, D. Lubix. Um, R.A. Um, Swalwellick, D. Lubix, um, the Temple of Man. Um, he breaks that information down and shows how the temples of Egypt is based on the proportion of the physical body. So hence he's showing you that the Holy of Holies, all right, um, is nothing more than the area in your brain where the soul dwells at. And then you have the holy place which symbolizes where the heart dwells at. Then you have the, um, the outer gates which is symbolic to where you defecate and urinate from, which is the lower organs. Um, so, um, so that's what that is all about. To. And each of the temples in Egypt, or Kemet or Temerai, is based on the structure of the physical body. All right. Also in Greek, you have Hilios Biblios, which means some papers. It is derived from the Book of Ra, to the Book of the Raising and the, and the Evolutions of Ra, also called the Ra Papyrus or Ra Paper Ra, which is also called the Sun Book, on the same pages. So the word Holy Bible is nothing more than the Sun Book of Ra, or the Book of Ra, mm -hmm. which is the Book of the Rising and the Evolutions of Ra. Mm -hmm. So please, let's not get stuck. This is still an ancient committee um, text that we're reading. It's nothing more than the summary of the um, books coming from the Pyramid text, the Corporate text, the Book of Kung Fu by Day and Night, which is called the Book of the Day, the Book of the Rising and the Evolutions of Ra. 
There's nothing more than the stories within these various sections. Also, you can compare Psalms 104 with the um 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 Aknat and hymns, uh, um, uh, ten hymns, and is um 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 the same. 104 Psalms and Aknat and hymns is um, identical. So here we have the picture actually of Africa. All right. Af, the physical body, Ra, and here she is breathing in the cup. You see the cup going right into her nostrils. So when cosmic light force enters um, the energy from Atun Ray, the sun, enters your body via the air that you inhale, the life force energy has now entered your house, your temple, your flesh. The air inside your lungs is internalized air, and the air inside matter which could be called Afuraka, the body of the life force or personalized life force. While the air outside of your body is simply air, which is universal life force, oxygen, prana. So you don't become an African until you learn the signs of breath. <laughs> this is more of the metaphysical um, 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 breakdown of this. A true African is one who masters the signs of breath because the word um, Af, as we say, means body, temple, house. The word Ra symbolizes the power, life force of the sun. The word Ka means spirit. Or high land, which is talking about raising the energy from the low land, lower Egypt, to the high land, upper Egypt. The only way you can do that is through the breath. And as you see the rays, which is what colors? Red, black, and green. Good God and mind. <laughs> hmm. Resurrection colors. So it's telling you that the only way that you can resurrect within your house, your physical body, is through the breath of life. The life force energy. So hence makes you Afro-Ka. This is what makes you an African. The mastering of the science of the melanin, of the light, of the sounds, of the wavelengths, of the frequencies, of the modes, of the schemes, of the patterns. And they come down from life force Ra from Aten Ray, from the Divine Sun, in which that is in between the two eyes, the left Tahuti, the right Heru, in which that brings forth wisdom and reality, in which that this knowledge is housed here, which is the Divine Soul. Hence we find the Divine Soul once again, being raised by the Ka. So Ka means raised land, high land, which, hold up, if I'm not mistaken, I could have sworn that the Highlanders, the movies from back in the days, the TV show from back in the days, and any time they wish that he would kill another Highlander, the cop will come into him. So, right here, cop means raised land, high land, exalted land, hill, mountain. In the um, language of the Kemets, um, ancient Egypt is cop. Your cop is your divine consciousness, is a drop of divine consciousness, awareness. Intelligence or matter plus breath and mind equals consciousness from the supreme being, ocean of consciousness. Your ka is the divine force of consciousness within your head and it's always pulling you in the right direction. In other words, upwards. In other words, into the highlands. Good God and mind. And it's always pulling you into the right direction, in the direction which is in harmony with divine order. So hence you have Nephet, or Set. You see the throne on her head? That is all set, because she's the throne. Here you have Nephet, her sister, and as you see, they're holding their hands in the image of the Ka, the Dejit, which symbolizes the backbone of Osiris. Here you have the Ankh, which symbolizes the key of the light force, and here you have the Ka, the raised arm, showing you what exists within the highlands once you raise yourself up through the Dejit, through the spinal column, the backbone of Osiris, which brings forth the source or the key of life, which leads you to immortality. Your divine self, your higher self, your God, your Lord and personal Savior. So we have Prophet Nobu Ali said that the Moors was living up and down the Mississippi River before the Europeans came, and the Moors are the offsprings of kings and queens, because the Omex, the word Omex means um, Al Malik, which means the kings. All right, the word Omek was a Mayan um, rendition of the word, of the Arabic word Al-Malik. And Al-Malik means the kings. So this is the reason why we all said to be the descendants of the kings and queens, mm -hmm. because we are the descendants of the Omeks. 
You know what that word sounds like too, brother? It sounds like old Mecca. Right. That's it. Mm -hmm. Old Mecca. And then old Mecca. Mecca was where? Mm -hmm. As we would say within Islam, where is Mecca located at? It's supposed to be located in Saudi Arabia. But I could have sworn that was still Africa. <laughs> but here we have the first Americans were blacks. All right, so the first Americans were black, and here we have um, the information coming from what they never told you in history class, so that's been verified. And then they show you the black gods in America, the ancient black gods in America, and they show you the faces of the Omex. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm showing you how the ancient Egyptians are the modern day Omex, which are you. You are descendants directly from the Omex, which who had an empire, the Western Empire that existed here 6,000 years ago. And that's what they are talking about, that the remnants of that empire is what was defeated in 1956. It was the Omekian Empire. Here it is, the black god of the ancient America. Once again, another face. It says blacks has um, began his career in America, not as slave, but as a master. Mm -hmm. So we once were masters here. Now we have become slaves. This is not my damn career, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Um, Afro-Americans in pre-Columbia and Mexico, you know, we have um, them proven right here says about um, new information. No information was given um, on these heads, but they were clearly of Negroid black race. This is what they said. And we have the Nubian coming out of Sudan and looking identical to the Omex. So hence, Dr. York was right now only would be Nubians coming from out of the Sudan but well, it was also called the Omex, in which that, as Prophet Nubi Drali said, was up and down the Mississippi River before the Europeans came. So before 400 years ago, we was called Moors up and down the Mississippi River. Because, remember, the Ethiopians were called Kush Moors. M-O-E-R. The Kush Moors. All right? So anytime that you find the Nubians, or the Sudanese, um, the Ethiopians, um, Somalians, the ancient name for all of them at one time being that that was the land of Ethiopia, all right, or what's called the burnt faces. Um, prior to that, it was called Abyssinia. Prior to that, it was called Kush. We're actually talking about the Kush Moor. So the word um, Kush was dropped, and the word Moor was utilized um, from, um, from thenceforth. Here we have reparation equals war, which will um, free and unite black people the nationality, lineage, government, and history of the indigenous um, black aboriginal people in America. This is volume one by um, Dr. Ali Muhammad. He shows the pictures of Prophet Abdullah's mother, Eliza Turner, and his father, John Drew. So, we find out, um, it states in the Moorish um, Science Temple of America um, within the 101, that Prophet Nubu Ali was born on the Cherokee Reservation in, um, in North Carolina, 1886. Well, Nubu Ali states this. He says that I did not tell anybody where I was born or who my mother or who my parents were because I did not want the people to make a shrine out um, out of the place and where my parents um, um, were um, over my make over my parents like was done with Joseph and Mary. Now that was symbolic term that was used because. Um, when we find out who his mother and father was, we find out that Eliza Turner was part of a landmark case. Uh, she was part of the landmark case. Um, what was her name again, brother? I'm sorry. Eliza Turner. Right? Turner? Turner. Turner, like as in Tunica and, and Nat Turner and all that? Right, right. Same word. Right? Eliza Turner, Tunica, Drew Quitman. Quitman. Um, she was related to um, Nat Turner, um, Henry Bishop McNeil Turner, mm. all of them. Yeah, she was related to all of them. It was all related. And we'll see here that um, landmark case of the free men, um, free men and women who land in Louisiana, they belong to um, an ancestor's did. It says the court case was the United States versus the heirs of Tunica Turner, case 32, United States Appellate Court in 1850, and then also the heirs of Turner, um, Henry Turner, Turner, Tunica, excuse me, Turner, versus the um, United States um, case 191. Both of these cases were landmark because they found, they found out that the Louisiana so-called purchase never was purchased and the land belonged to these individuals. All right, so the case dealt with um, land left by the Marquise de Mason Rouge. 
to his son by a black woman named Annie Marie. The attorneys won the case. The United States appealed the case and lost. This occurred in, 19, in um, 1850 and was one of the events that was a precursor to the Civil War. So here we have Eliza Turner, or Eliza Quitman, her name, and here you have her with 1,036 acres of land of the Mason Rouge Grant. And you actually come up to over 68,883 acres in which that they won back from the United States government out of Louisiana. Here's the portions of Louisiana in which that um, they won back. All of this is the upper portion, all of this, from the mid to the upper portion of Louisiana is ours. And she was going to go for 3 million to 15 million more. Um, um, the Empress, who was also related to um, Eliza Turner um, through the family. Here in her book, Return of the Ancient Ones, The True History Uncovered of the Washington D.W. Monument Empire, Empress Verdiasi of the um, Black Washington Empire, the state of Louisiana, was originally stolen and illegally sold as the Louisiana Purchase. In the land of this stolen property of the ancient Black Washington Empire, the ancient ones, the Washington File. Here she shows us um, the United States versus Turner, um, the Turner um, heirs. Right here, you have what name? Eliza Turner. So Eliza Turner, once again, is the mother of property over Gerard Lee. Here we have the grants, in which that shows this. This is also recorded within Malachi's book, Dr. Malachi's New York Hill, um, in his book, Set the Record Straight. So here, um, Prophet Ojali, being the son of Eliza Turner, he stated, look at what I have won. Now this was handed to, um, to me by the government. It represents the royal prince. Prophet Ojali was a royal prince of the Tunic of Washington. He was the fifth royal regent, which means he was, a, he was the prince. He was the fifth prince of the royal regent of the Maison de uh, Rouge, which is Washington proper, Miss Nomad, Louisiana Purchase. So hence when they say that um, in 1928, that he went to Havana, Cuba, and received the land mandate. This is the land mandate in which they referred to was the grants and the information which I just showed on the records. So here, the Louisiana proper, so-called Louisiana purchase consists of what states? Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Miss, um, Minnesota, Nebraska, Colorado, Kansas, Iowa, um, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Texas, parts of Texas, Alabama, Utah, actually Florida, New Mexico, and portions of even the so-called 13 colonies, all right? In other words, it go and actually stretches all the way up into Canada, all right? So it governs over some 15 million acres. Here it is. All it is. I think in the real irony here is that the French sold it to them well, they thought they did. And, and they, they don't own it, and, right. you know. So it's right. like me selling you the Brooklyn Bridge. Bingo. Yeah, you want the Brooklyn Bridge? Sure. Give me, um... So now what you got to do is go and claim it. <laughs> yep. Mm. Exactly. And, and he had to sell that because, what, the, uh, the French got whooped by right. <laughs> Napoleon, I mean, uh, Tucson and, 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 right. and Haiti. Right. And then it went bankrupt. Right. <laughs> exactly. Louisiana is just a little no. This is Louisiana um, so-called purchase, and you will see a better picture in this a little bit later as I continue on. So here we have Henry Joseph Turner, and what do you read here? I don't know if you can see it too clear. Let me see if I can get this a little bit clearer here. As clear as I can get it. All right, but I read this part right here. It says, Frederick Houston Washington, region of the Empire Washington, the Dominion, were married Annie Frank Turner, the recipient of 1762 and 1795 Spanish land grants, and the heirs of the Henry Joseph Turner estate. The eldest daughter of Frederick and Frankie is the current um, Imperial Empress of Washington, Verdiasi Tierra Washington. Vieira of Verdiasi is married to John Gaston. The son of Corella Turner. Corella is the daughter of Eliza Turner. Eliza is the mother of Prophet Nova Drew Ali. Corella and Drew Ali are brothers and sisters. Eliza is the daughter of Sarah Turner and Henry Joseph Turner. So John Ghostin 
have been the sixth Marquise D. Mason Rouge after Nova Drali, who have been the fifth Mason D. Um, um, Marquise D. Mason Rouge. So, Prophet Nova Drali said, I am the fifth and the last prophet, and I am five times more powerful than I was before. So he included through his statements, through his oral statements and his prophecies. So this is the reason why he said he was the fifth, because he was the fifth um, royal region of this land mass, of that land. Here's the imperial flag of the empire. What color is on it? Black and green. Oh, so the Moors flag and black, black, and green. Yes. Okay. I just finished showing that even um, the Empire Watch Story, the Manya flag is red, black, and green. Walker Garby flag, red, black, and green. Um, the Sudanese flag, red, black, and green. The Moors of Granada, Spain was red, black, and green. Um, the Ethiopian flag was red, black, and green. Um, I think we about covered it. Yeah. Yeah. He did, he did, he did a good job. Here go um, our flag as being um, the, first, um, the first nation state of the Empire Watch Road, the Manya. United Washo D W Mayor, which I am a prince of. That was our flag. That's why I can talk on the red, black, and green. But that's your flag. Because that's my flag also. Here we have um you can see now much more fifteen million acres of land, can't you? Hmm. Can you see this? Can you see that? How can you visit this? Yeah, yeah. That's what they, what that's called. Louisiana. Okay, there you go. Wow, so we think Louisiana is just little. No, Louisiana ain't that little behind place right here. Okay. This is not Louisiana. This is Louisiana. Wow. And actually, it's not even Louisiana. That is the Empire Washington Lead Up the Money. That is our land. Where'd you get that map from? This is out of an actual historical, um, actually a history book um, um, of um, one of um, my children. Now, uh, uh, brother, uh, so the other the other tribes, such as the, the Montuckets, Right. The the Mi'kmaq and all of that they exactly. lived on the on the land of yes. uh yes actually you will see um, the Empress she breaks down that there's many descendants of the Washington and she go into the five civilized tribes the mm -hmm. Cherokee the Choctaw the Seminoles the Creek which is the Muscogee and the um, Chickasaw she goes into the um, the Shoshones she goes into the Seneca she goes into the Mi'kmaq she goes into the Osage the Comanche all of them was Washington all of them was black dark skinned people. Okay, you know, they got you thinking that uh uh those five the five um Some tribes about tribes, right. tribes were red people. No, that's where we got the name El Bay de Al Ali from. Now they is damn near white because they bleached the yeah, they, 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 they married in and right, then they, they ostracized the um the darker skinned ones who was part of those tribes. Right, because there's these a couple of tribes that um where the government has given them money, and the red men are trying to say the blacks are not right. uh, uh, authentic people right. of that tribe. Right, right, and that's not true. Mm -hmm. We are the most authentic people. Like and, if they knew, and if they knew the history like the way that we do here, then that would be easily disputed. It's not like the avatar. Yeah, yeah, there's that. There it is. That's why, that's why you better become your, that's why you better become the avatar. Well, uh, wasn't, uh, Turner was part of that. Yeah. That's why that turned went crazy and started killing the crackers off his land. Because <laughs> he read the Bible. Well, you know, I don't mean crazy, but that's why he that's why he used the excuse, yeah, God showed me the truth. <laughs> they ready to go and get him. What what he actually got shown is that he was part of this royal bloodline of this empire, Washington Didact Monia, of the Washington Propers, hence slash Miss Noble, Louisiana Purchase, and he found out that you on my land. And now that you on my land, I'ma get you up off my land. So here, according to the Empress Vodiasi, Turnica, Washita, um, Gaston L. Bay, she states that Thomas Jefferson was well aware of the fortunate land deal because the original price, $15 million in gold, was to purchase only a few streets. One was Bourbon Street, where they hold the Mardi Gras annually, and some military barracks. The whole Louisiana problem was never part of the land deal. So that whole area that I just showed you, <laughs> hold on, let me see if I can get that better here. This whole area, this was never part of the land deal. And the United States know it. That's why they don't want this information that I teach out. Because I got the shit. <laughs> Ain't nobody else showing you this information. Mm. You won't see none of this shit on YouTube. <laughs> Unless you're downloading. <laughs> mm. 
the real enemy of the state is the white boy. And whoever else along with them, mm -hmm. which um, I've seen a whole lot of black devils nowadays, so yeah. I put them in the same category. <laughs> I, I kill them just as quick as I would them. Anyway, the whole Louisiana proper was never part of the land there. In fact, this is the Egypt of the West, which was referred to by President Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason why Abraham Lincoln got assassinated, was because he was getting ready to return this land to us. Remember, he was a Moor. Yeah. You go back, his history is that of a Melungeon. A Melungeon is a Moor. Portuguese, Spanish, Native American, black heritage. This is his, that, that was his information. African heritage, I should say. Yeah, I think if he was taught by a brother, too. Right, if you go and check the five Negro presidents, you will see an actual picture of him in garb, African garb, Moorish garb, with a sword, and they call him Lincoln Africanus. Yeah, that's why he did And that is, right, and that is, um, that is in the, um, that is within the Library of Congress, that picture. So he was getting ready to return this land to us, and before they, um, he could turn, return it to us, they assassinated him. So now we have found out that um, the United States owe, owe us over um, um, $80 trillion in gold. Moreover, the payment to Napoleon Bonaparte was never fully rented. He received in value $13,250,000 dollars in gold. However, the other $2,750,000 um, in gold sunk beneath the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Florida. It was never retrieved. Therefore, full payment was never rendered. So now, even a few streets, military barracks was never really purchased. So they don't even own the few streets now, because service was never rendered. And if the land was never part of the land to begin with, then that means that all of that area that I just showed you is still ours. So here's the article, and she states right here. She writes, Thomas Jefferson was well aware of the fortune of the land deal and stated his sentiments at the time. In truth, the land spoken of has never been part of the United States of America. It was always belonged to the ancient ones. This sounded like the same land President Abraham Lincoln was going to return to the Moors after slavery. He called it the Egypt of the West, or of Central America, the land between the Rockies and the Allegheny Mountains, from the Gulf of Mexico up into Canada and on both sides of the uh, Mississippi. In 1848, the Washita, also Oshita, and Tonica nations took their land case before the United States Supreme Court and won their case under Judge Taney. The same judge who in 1856 gave his opinion, which was not a legal decision in the tragic Dred Scott case decision. So here you have one people who was able to prove that they belonged to the land and tied themselves back to the land through a nationality, and they won. And here you had another person from out of um, St. Louis, Missouri, who could not prove that he was part of the land, who didn't have a nationality, who said, come into court with the name Scott, and said that the judge, same judge said, um, there's nothing that a Negro has that a, um, that a white man is bound to respect. So that's why that landmark case, that's why that case, just that case is still taught today in law schools as a criteria. Because everybody has to know how to keep us oppressed. I think that there was something that you didn't have time to talk about President Obama. I think he has no right to be upset. Oh, oh well, President Obama is Washington. Him and, yeah, um, he said he has no right to make him be upset. He cannot afford to be upset if a white man said something. Right. Well, well, you know, he can't be upset. But he knows his history. He knows his heritage. He knows he... Obama already have come out and stated, um, um, matter of fact, when he went overseas, he spoke Arabic. You know what I'm saying? So he remember growing up using Arabic as a child in Indonesia. You know what I'm saying? Um, remember, he was Muslim. And he still talked about his Islamic faith today. You know what I'm saying? And he stated that the United States and Morocco has the oldest treaty that still exists today. And that he give um, and he give high note to the fact that Morocco recognized the United States. Now what Morocco? Is it the kingdom of Morocco? Has been colonized and enslaved since 1959? who the indigenous president of Morocco came to the United Nations three years ago, after Van Bada Bay can verify this, Brother Shaka Zulu can verify this, my wife can verify this, and many others who was there at the United Nations heard him say, we have your flag. 
We are in your land. And because of what you do today, we raise ourselves off of what you have done. So here he is, the indigenous president of Morocco, you know what I'm saying, stating that he, they have our flag. What is that flag? That is the same Moroccan flag which that we showed with the red, black, and green. Or what is that um, red background, that five-pointed star with the black border and the green star in the center? So right here it says, there is nothing. So then it says, and which basically says there is nothing that a black man to respect and resolve this opinion that further slavery and death to the Washington Tunica and other nations. It was murdered by the tens of thousands of slaves and ran off their lands. The names were um, changed to hide the truth of the history. The Washington became Washington and the Tunica became Turner. This is what she states. So here we have um, an actual document, which I have. Um, the Embers Rodiasi, Tierra, Washington, Tunica. Gaston L. Bay. Here you have the Empress of the Washington Dia of Lemonia. You have her signature here. You have, a, you have the two witnesses. You have the seal of the Washington Dia of Lemonia. And she states here One nation cannot make laws in another nation. One nation cannot make laws on another nation's land. The nation cannot steal and sell another nation's ancestry, artifacts, and property then flood their sacred place on indigenous people, lands that have always belonged to their ancient ones who is protected by a treaty signed by the um, Protectorate. It is further proclaimed that all indigenous sacred sites and grounds shall be returned to the descendants of the ancient inhabitants to ensure preservation. Be it further proclaimed that I now take on the indigenous nations, tribes, communities, and villages with our land, rivers, and wildlife under the protection of the Empire Washington of the Monument. And it is further proclaimed that the 13 United States, the United States, and the United States of America make, uh, must make fair and just um, compensation for the depossession of our people, the unauthorized occupation of our land, commencing with the first part to be paid, 80 quadrillion non-counterfeit USD every year for 194 years. And then, um, this being the third and final notice of the outstanding debt the 13 United States, the United States, and the United States of America based on claims filed that has yet to be settled or relieved. Be it further proclaimed that this pro um, proclamation be sent to the governments of the 13 United States, the United States, and the United States of America, as well as the governments of the members of the United States nation, of the United Nations and the non-governmental organizations concerned. Therefore, it is now proclaimed in legal session, convened this fourth day of the second year of 1997 of this common error. So, as you see here, she already laid out how much money that these individuals owed us and they would need to pay us <coughs> 80 quadrillion dollars for the next 140, um, 94 years. All right, so she sent this out um, to the United States government, um, to George Bush, um, as well, um, well, here in 97, I think, um, but they just office? used Clinton. Clinton. I think Clinton was in office at this time. But they just used the paper as toilet paper, and that, no action came from it. Right, right, right. But that still doesn't mean that we can't um, um, still pursue it. Right, exactly. So here we have the Washington Nation Morals Historical Synopsis. Peru, Mexico, Isabella now called Cuba, United States, um, Canada, and Alaska are European inventions which com um, comprises the lands of the cultural morals, um, the descendants from the ancient Amor. Um, nation, the ancient Moor, Washington Moor, the father of the civilization began on the Great Isles, Island Empire of Mu, the Moria, um, which about 8,000 years ago, a natural catastrophe overwhelmed the ancient motherland. Some of its survivors um, made their way to what is, um, has since became known as North, Central, and South Mexico, America. The Imperial, um, Imperial Empire of Washington did that the money. The Washington Wash Nation of Moors are an indigenous people of North America, the Washta, all right, or the Uasheta, all right, otherwise known as the Omex, have been um, originally associated with the Washington. Accordingly, the Washington has been the primary group of the most general population of indigenous people identified in history as the Moors, the Moors, known to the Spanish and the uh, French. The Washoe has now come to know as the English, as the Adina Hope Rally, and people identify as the Punic Iberian Affinity. Now, we just finished learning about the Punic Wars 
and um, Iberia, we just finished talking about um, Hannibal, how he was part of this same Carthaginian uh, family. Here it is maintained as the um, Ardalusian Carthaginian um, heritage. As such, the Washa has been associated with the Eastern or Gonfman Native Americans having acquired um, in ancient Egyptian as well as Punic script and vocabulary as they have um, appeared in the um, epigraphic records of North America. So our language is Egyptian as well as Punic script and vocabulary. The ancient comedic script so much in these lectures. So here, how do we know? Once again, go to the Book of the Dead. A hieroglyphic trans, um, transcript of the Pi of Ani, translation of English and, and introduction by E.A. Wallace Bletch, um, the late keeper of the Egyptian and Aus, um, Assyrian antiquity um, in the British Museum. He states that the goddess Ueshet, which is actually Washita, as you can see here, go back. What's that word right there? See the arrow? What's that word? Spell that up there. Oshita. O U A C H I T A. Next. What is this? Ancient commit. What that mean? A T C H I T. Ochit. U S shit. U S shit. Right. So the god of U S shit, which is the serpent head. This is the empress. She's the head of the empire. Watch for the the money. Why a woman? Let's see. Ah. Ueshet means what? Was a form of Hetheru, Hathor, and was identified with the appearance of the sky in the north when the sun rose. Hold up, who was laid in the north? Hiram Abiff was laid in the north, which is a form of Heru. So the woman comes in order to symbolize the resurrection. Because she resurrected Heru. Who resurrected Osiris? It was his mother, um, Heru's mother, by the name of who? Orset. So Ueshet. And Arset is actually one and the same, a form of Het Heru, or um, um, Hathor. She is either, look at this, she is either depicted in the form of a woman having upon her head the crown of the north and the scepter around which the serpent is twined, or as a winged Uraeus wearing the crown of the north. She was the principal goddess of the town of Butu in the Delta. Excuse me, just a comment. Yes. Is this why it is so confusing to people? See the crown up there, yes. which is Het Haru Het crown. Haru, right. I set often wears that. Right. Exactly. And and uh, sometimes the only reason why you know it's Arset right. is because it says Arset. It says Arset. Because right. other than that, you would think it's Het Haru, but right. they are like into. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Yeah. So Arset, <laughs> right. Het Haru, and even Mut, Mut. the mate of. I'm a, I'm a, right. Are all at the same the, the same energy. Right. And right. and often you will see them wearing the same headdress, right. the same vulture, you right. know, headdress. Right. And the only reason why you can tell Mut, Hetharu, and Set is that the name is there yeah, because yeah. they're interchangeable in energies. Right, because they just symbolize the goddess energy, the woman or the Neta the Neta um energy, you know, which is actually the Kundalini. Okay. The mother god is forced within each and every one, the Holy Spirit. Right. And as the mother or the Holy Spirit raises up through the um, the digit, which is the backbone of Osiris, which we seen earlier. Right. It comes up and it strikes the eye of Heru, which is Het Heru. And so, actually, Het Heru awakens. You know what I'm saying? By the energy of all set, because they're one and the same. You know what I'm saying? Because that actually is the original position of the Kundalini in the body was actually at the eye, which is the pineal gland or the third eye. However, the energy fell. Hence the fall of man, Thomas falling into the various states of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Falling from infinite consciousness to magnetic consciousness to super consciousness to subconsciousness to life consciousness, interpersonal, intrapersonal consciousness, and then eventually intra, interpersonal consciousness. So that's why they um, wear the head head rule crown. So this is why it says right here that she is depicted in the form of a woman. So hence the reason why the Empress is at the head of the Washington. Because here go the name right here, Ueshet, so, all right? Or Washet. That, that word, you know, U A T C H I T. Right. Is it you no know, uh, Wajet? 
Wajet. Yeah, it can, remember the U and the W are interchangeable. Right, right. It could be Wajet. It could be Wajet. Right. Like you have Nekabet and Wajet. Right. And Wajet. Okay. That's so, what it means, right? right? Yes, the same right. thing. That's exactly the same thing. That's exactly what we mean. Wajet or Ueshet or Washeshet or Washita. Okay. Same so word. U and W are interchangeable. Right, yeah. right. And that's the reason why they don't want us to know that we are the ancient Egyptians. But it's very easy to tell because let's go to the Grand Canyon. We yes, have 18 I'm... temples there in the Grand Canyon with Egyptian or Kemetic or Tamarian hieroglyphics. Yeah, you know, man. Well, some areas you can't go to <laughs> right. now. Some areas. The government barred you from going there. Right. Uh -huh. And when I asked them, I was there probably two years ago, when I asked them how come so many of these uh, mountain peaks and stuff have Kemetic Egyptian names, he said, oh, it's no relationship. He says, the ancient early Egyptologists were just in love with Egypt. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, just to right. keep you this straight, you know. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, they, they love that one. Well, the someone told me though, you was because you see, when Pangea separated, mm -hmm. that area was in Egypt. So when Pangea separated, so that part of Egypt went away. Yeah. Well, also the fact is that we, as the Egyptian people, have been here. You know, um, the Omex were the ancient Egyptians because they was actually from the tribe of the Dogons, and the Dogons were the actual astrological priests of the ancient Egypt um, dynasty, the pre-dynastic dynasties of Egypt, mm -hmm. all right? And what happened is that because of invasions, they left from out of Kenya and went into Mali, and then eventually became the Omex in which they left from out of Africa, West Africa, and came into North, um, um, South America, Central America, and North America. So this is not really, you know, a separation of Pangea. No. no. When Pangea separated, those civilizations, that was, that's pre that. Right. Those continents were already in positions like right. that. Right. Before the civilizations right. that we're talking about came into existence. Oh, right. Okay. Um, the Omex civilization dates back to about five to 6,000 years ago. Pangea is hundreds of thousands, right, right. hundreds of millions. Million. Right, right. Pangea so, goes back to about two million this, years ago. That land separated before ago. the old Max. Yes. 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 Right. yes, right, right, right. Now, not before humanoids or before we was on the planet, though, but yeah. before the old Max civilization, which takes okay. only back to five to six thousand years ago. Because okay. we got proof, according to forbidden archaeology by Michael Creedmore, he states in there that humanoids or human beings were on this planet at least 2.8 billion years ago. Because they have found spears, um, um, or fears of iron ore, which is about like this, of iron ore. That means that the people at that time had the ability in order to melt or smelt iron. Mm -hmm. They claim that that was a, um, a recent phenomenon. So who had this technology 2.8 billion years ago um, having the ability to smell iron? And then at the equator of each of the balls that they found of this iron ore, mm -hmm. they found a writing system. It was a writ. Upon each of um, on each one. So that means we not only did we have the ability to smell iron, we also had a writing system. So even in the book he said that there was intelligent life um, um, back then, 2.8 billion, not million, billion years ago. So we've been on this planet a long time. This goes back to what Ali Blasi Muhammad said that we had no um, set birth record. Right, but we actually that history channel are talking and you're talking a lot these days you know about those things. Right. As you know. Brother, Brother Ben, is there any way I can get some inf some some documented information based on what you just said right there? Yeah, about the, I got it on here. I go to it after, um, um, before we, yeah, matter of fact, I, um, I, I get No, it. after we finish, you know. Okay, yeah, well, I, yeah. Um, as soon as I finish this, I only got a few more slides of this. Okay. I can pull that up, okay. and um, we can go through that right quick. Okay. Right here, this is United Nations. This is the general um, session of the Com um, Commission on Human Rights. Remember, we read earlier that Malcolm and even Martin both had to realize that we had to go into human rights. So what did the Empress do? Well, she went to the United Nations and in 1993, Washo Vida Demonia Luet became the oldest indigenous people on earth. And this is the website that you can go to in order to pull up this exact same file. www.cwis.org right slash fwdp right slash international right slash report 14 dot text. TXT. So, you can pull up this, and once again, this is discrimination against indigenous people. And we've been in part of the United Nations since 1994. I mean, excuse me, since 1993. Matter of fact, our seat number is 215- or right slash 1993. Alright? So we sit on the Social and Economic Council um, about discrimination against indigenous people. 
That is our phone number. What is the relationship in terms of name? Is there any difference or is it just semantics between Washita and Watikachu? Is that just a... No, it's the same. It's the same. Right. It's just same. grammatical same. Right. right. Um, Choctaw, like Washita, um, um, Washita, uh, Washita, same, same, same words. Thing. Mm -hmm. Right. West, there's what about Westington? I think different, there's different yeah. pronunciation based on what tribe. You know, it's just like um, you have a person who comes from Jamaica, you have a person who comes from um, um, from the South, and you have a person who comes from the North. Everybody can understand each other. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's out. Um, the accent and the dialect is a little bit different. different. you up in North. They don't say up yonder or down yonder. You know what I'm saying? That that's a southern term. Right. But you know what we talked about. Go right. down, go go up yonder, down yonder. Right. We call it like spatial connotation. Right. You know, right. just different right. dialogues based right. upon spatial geographical right. reasons. Right. Okay. Right. Right. So that Washington talk about teacher right. same thing. That's okay. the same thing. Same thing. <laughs> so you say that a nation can recognize under the red, black, and green right. as a whole the nation region. as the oldest indigenous people on the face of the earth. So under our flag time. is recognized at the United Nations. And us as being the oldest indigenous people on the face of the earth. Under that? Red, under that flag. Under that red, black, and green wow. flag. So, yes, definitely. Yes. So, here the Empress is in the magazine, Ancient American Magazine, um, issue 17. This is it, it here. It reports evidence for black skinned natives in the Americas long before the arrival of Columbus is abundant. From the distinctive Negro, Negroid features of the Colossus Omex sculpture heads and the pre Aztec obsidian. Um, obsidian on um, bowls being upheld by a figure um, which, you know, with unmistakable black characteristics to the bones of the Negro persons excavated from a 2,000-year-old mound in northern Wisconsin. A wealth of material exists to establish the certainty of the non-white, non-Indian population living in pre-Columbian America along with these other groups. Um, there, but, um, though, so many mounds have been deliberately destroyed. Over 200,000 ancient um, pyramids and huge um, mounds of the earth in the shape of cones, animals, and geometrical designs can still be found in the um, southern coast of America to Canada. These structures were built by the so-called obscure people, largely known as the mound builders. So hence the word DW Demonia means mound builder. Right, in, in Detroit, there's a, a, a mound, yeah. just before you go, you know, and when the French came there, they asked the red man, why did y'all build these? And the red man said, oh no, this was here before we got here. Mm -hmm. This was done by the blacks. Right, and not only that, <laughs> even in the Shane um, province of the East um, province, the Xi'an province of China, they asked the Chinese people about it, and they said the same thing. These was here before we got here. So here are the ancient Chinese. Is the first dynasty of, of China was Shang, um, and the um, first people was called the, um, the it was the Omex, the Dogon, who was the ancient Sumerian people. They were the first to enter into um, those areas to put together that dynasty, um, the Shang dynasty. Um, the Omex, um, as you know, um, also um, branched out and became the Nigerians and the Niger people. All right, so hence the term Niger, um, even in China, coming from Nigeria. All right, um, but here you just clearly see um, they was African. Is the um, East Yi people who found the black um, um, Astronegus, um black Chinese? Here they are. She got braids. I had the privilege of being there. Um, I had a free trip to China as a national champion in martial arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we went off the broke, uh, off the trail, right. we came into a village here, and almost all these people were black with pointy eyes. I mean, uh, slant, slanty eyes like that. Mm -hmm. And they were doing a form of martial, uh, like Tai Chi, right? right? So I said, "Oh, this is Chinese Tai Chi." He said, "Oh no, we were doing this before the Chinese got here." Right. Uh, right. Exactly. <laughs> and see, you're gonna have to write a book on that too. Yeah. yeah. And people really want to know about the origin of martial arts. That's that's going to be necessary. Yeah, he got the book yet. Yeah. No, I know. I know. That's why I just said. We don't have to read that joint. I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to put some pages up in there, too. Okay. <laughs> so here we have um, the um, pyramid of the Meru. Here on the word Meru again. That was actually the name of the pyramids, the mounds, the Tekins, in the Xi'an province of China. Do you know that on this pyramid, 
this Chinese pyramid mound had on it red, black, green, and yellow. On each side here, it was red, black, green, and yellow. Of course, it's now weathered off, but these are the colors in which that was once on this mound or on this pyramid. So we even have a pyramid in China that had the colors of red, black, and green, and yellow. Now, we just going to show you that these colors extended from out of um, Kinnick or um, Tamari. And now we showed you that the um, Dogons or the Omex, and the Omex became the Shang Dynasty people, the first Shang Dynasty. So the word Shang is short for Shango. Who are the people who are now the Shango today? It would be the Nigerians, right? The Igbo, right? Me. Yes. <laughs> So the Wu Tang Clan, they 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 have a right to all of that. That's to play with to play with Wu Tang. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so we find out that the colors red, black, and green um, dates back much farther than what we expected. And it's just not um, with Marcus Garvey, but we have gone and shown within historical connections that these colors exist from off the walls of Asia, coming in even as far as Asia. Hence China, hence the term also Asiatic. Can, can you go back, well, what providence did you say this was in? This, this, is, in, this is in the Xi'an providence of China. Um, um, Xi'an, um, X-I-A-N. The Xi'an. Yeah, and, and you know, brother, as far as I know, Wu Tang means black man. Yeah. Wu is, I think, even spirit or something, but Tang is black. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And what kind of date is here? Well, that's fine. Um, this dates back um, over 4,000 years ago. Okay, so this doesn't supersede the, the pyramids in Egypt. Okay. No. How old is this one? Does, but it does supersede. Four thousand. Um, but oh, it does okay. supersede um, the Chinese people, as mm -hmm. they call themselves right. today. Yeah. Yes. So this brother's on point with that. Yeah, so he got another <laughs> picture of these pyramids in China. Plenty of them. And they have nothing to do with the Chinese people. Nothing to do with. No. And so here we have the followers of Shango, the Nigerians of the Yoruba religion, right? So the Yoruba, the Igbo, all of them had this deity by the name of Shango. Shango was the thunder god, in which that now, of course, if you read the comic books, that's Thor. All right? Um, you have the, um, and it was called what? Um, the Mu Xian became Mexian, which eventually became Mexican, Mexico, from the word Omeka. So the Aborigines called themselves Mexicans, and they remixed with the Omex, which resulted in a sub-tribe called Hopi. The Hopi clan, Happy, ancient Kemet once again, was taught the religion of the Dogon and given the secrets of the stars. Several hundred years later, the Hindu Indians, East Indian, hence they was called the Vividians, um, Kushites, arrived in Mexico, and they breeded in with the Mexicans and produced the Mongolian tribes, like the um, um, Inuit, and the um, Eskimo, which migrated far north to Canada and Alaska. All right, so we see these historical connections and how this um, came about. Now, um, let me go back and deal with this thing here. I don't know if we got into it, but um, I'm not going to deal too much with this, but this goes back to the fact of being three foot of human being that would be classified as artificial person, and then a five-fifth of a being, which is a whole being, would be classified as a natural person. So here we have an artificial person, an entity such as a corporation created by law, given certain um, rights, um, certain, um, yeah, certain legal rights and duties of a human being, a real, a being, a real or imaginary, who for the purpose of legal reasoning is treated more or less as a human being, also termed fictitious person. Juristic person, legal person, Black's Law Dictionary, 7th edition. Natural person is a human being opposed to an artificial or fictitious person, such as a corporation. So um, it is the opposite. So we want to be natural persons um, or natural beings. Um, the way in which they have us is three fifths of a human being, which this information has been up, um, up at the um, top. So I don't know what happened while it's down here, but um, artificial person. Um, this shows um, what has been taking place with us being classified. And um, that is the end of that um, information. And I'm going to 
go to this information right quick and show it. <laughs> so you mute anyway. So those are actually one and the same. So you actually have deaf, you know what I'm saying, being mute, and hence your sight. So those two things was taken from us. And so that's what they say. So because of that, you deaf, dumb, and blind. You can't see. You just like Hiram Biff who was hitting the head by the three ruffians, which you can't <coughs> wait. Speak no evil, see no evil, hear no evil now. Because you're unconscious. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And hence, you come from a monkey anyway. <laughs> so hence, they show the monkey with the fez on all the time, don't they? Clapping them damn symbols. I would say we're closer to gorillas than monkeys, huh? Well, you, hey, my, my friend, monkeys are savages, man. E R I L L A. Yeah, right. <laughs> in Detroit, makes a statement often, right. and he says that um, we are spiritual beings right. using gorilla hard drive, using gorilla hard drive. In right. other words, our body is right. almost identical to that of the gorilla in right, terms of right. muscles, right. tendons, joints, right. everything. Right, right, right. But the brain is different, but we got different hard, I mean, right. you know, different uh, right. uh, software. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so we got the spiritual software that goes beyond anything, right. but we run on gorilla hard drive. Right. Well, and, and that makes